Welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. This is another Sunday update video. I also post silent build videos on Wednesdays, so be sure to check those out as well. Today, we're going to talk about the Model T. So if you saw the last build video, you would have seen that basically we pretty much finished it. I went through the rear end, replaced a few parts that needed to be replaced, added some new brakes to it, uh, put it all back together, and so we're basically ready to, to hit the road. So the next video for this car is going to be the drive video, which is awesome. It, it's, it's just great to be at this point on the build. But um, I will kind of go over what took place in that video and what's taken place since then, uh, things you didn't see in that video. So I pulled the rear end off. Um, I didn't do a full rebuild on it. That was never my intention. Um, in fact, I'm not even positive that I want to keep this rear end. I may try to get a Ruxtal rear end, which has two extra gears. So I live in a hilly area and that may make the car much better to drive. So this wasn't a full rebuild and these, my videos aren't really how-to videos anyways. More of just showing the process for this car. But I did go through it. Uh, I had to replace some of the thrust washers, some of the bearings. One of the bearings was bad. Two of them were kind of worn. So I replaced those. I added the brakes which have actual brake shoes on them like modern brake shoes so you can use them to stop the car so that's going to be a good safety feature uh, and then I got it all back together and everything seems to work I did drive it just a little bit since then so it, everything seems to be working well and, and I'm preparing now to do the actual drive video the a few things that I changed so originally it had these coil springs that kind of attached to the two sides of the leaf springs on the car. And these are not stock. This was some kind of aftermarket thing that someone added. And a lot of people say they don't even really like the way that they make it ride. They make it kind of too wobbly. Uh, anyway, I took those off. They were in bad shape. The connectors were in pretty bad shape. You can see this one is really worn out and this one's been repaired. So I took those off. And then I also was pleasantly surprised that that lowered the back of the car a little bit. I always thought the back of the car seemed a little bit too high. Uh, so that brought it down a little bit, maybe an inch or two, but enough that I think it looks a little bit better. It doesn't seem to look as odd that the back end was so high. So that's all good. Um, on the inside, I mentioned before the carpet and how much I didn't like it. So I ended up just kind of getting this matte material and cutting it down. And I'm using that for now, and then we'll see. Maybe I'll decide to do a full carpet kit. But I think this looks good for now. So I got that in the front and the back. I also made these little kick panels here and these little pockets so I could have the registration in there. Oh, and you can see. Yeah, so I drove it to the gas station uh, after putting the rear into it. That was the first time I've driven it really outside of the neighborhood. And so I had my mask there. But yeah, it was... It was an uh, interesting thing to do, but I'm definitely looking forward to doing an actual drive video. The other thing that I've done that wasn't included in the video are the turn signals and the brake lights. So you can see here, this was a kit that I bought and it comes with this part that goes on the steering column and the lights, and then you have to wire it in yourself. But so, so yeah, so now you can see there's like a little light on there that flashes so it has turn signals and hazard lights and then also there's a switch you install, install under here and so it has brake lights now as well but you can see I've got the hazards on now so that's all good this I've got this wired to still be the tail light which is basically just a running light it doesn't have a brake light or anything that's just your driving light so if you turn the lights on this lights up but these two lights here work as the brake light and turn signal. So that'll make it much safer. And I don't think it looks that bad. It's not really that obvious when they're not on. They don't really stand out. But when they are on, you have them there for safety. So that's all good. Oh, I also got these dash lights to work. I replaced the bulbs. So thank you guys. A lot of people pointed out where I could find those correct bulbs. So I got those and that fixed that. I also fixed, uh, um, hooked up the dome light. So I've got that working. So now almost everything works on the car. 
the horn doesn't work yet. I did install a horn button here, but there must be some issue with the horn. I don't know if it's just a bad ground or if I need to actually fix something inside the horn, but that doesn't work. And then the generator doesn't work. So I mentioned in the last update video that I bought that plate that goes in here and that I was pretty confident that that was gonna fix it. So I installed that it was pretty easy to do. Getting the generator in and out is easy and installing that was easy to do. But there's really more that needs to be repaired on the generator. The bearing back here didn't sound that great. The, um, the wire, whatever those little coil wrap things are that are inside the generator, they didn't seem to be in that good of shape and the wires coming off of them are not in that good of shape. So I put it back together thinking I'll just use it as it is for now and then I'll replace it. But I didn't even get to do that. When I went to connect the wire back to it, it was sparking. Uh, there's definitely the, something in the generator is messed up. I must have messed something up and now it's grounded. Uh, so you can't use it at all. Um, but that's fine. They are supposed to be grounded if they're not being used. So like if this stopper was malfunctioning or whatever and you weren't using the generator, you are supposed to ground it. Because if you don't ground it, then it can really burn itself up and cause issues. So it's grounded now, which means it's safe to drive. I just have it unhooked, as you can see. And I've ordered a rebuilt generator. So I'm just going to replace that. And that should take care of that problem. But right now, as long as the battery's charged, you can drive for a long time on the battery. Because the only thing it's really running are the turn signals and the brake lights. Because it runs off, the engine runs off the magneto. So, that's what's going on there. But yeah, basically, I mean, this thing's ready to drive and be enjoyed. Uh, I'm trying to kind of figure out how I'm going to do the drive video. But I do expect to have a video out next Wednesday that will be me driving the car. So I'm working on a few different ideas and we'll see how that goes. But um, I mean, it's awesome. It's, it's finally ready to be on the road. So anyway, that's pretty much it for this update video. Thanks for watching, guys. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing.